Hey, Sustainable Living Geeks. During this podcast, I'm asking you to close your eyes. You know you only do that when it's safe, right? So no closing eyes while driving, you hear? Welcome to the Sustainable Living Podcast. Tips, tools, and tactics for living a heart-centered life that honors Mother Earth and her inhabitants. The information shared on the Sustainable Living Podcast reflects the opinions of host Marion West, Janice Fryant, and their guests. Please use your own discretion and research before applying any information to your individual situation. Now, here are your hosts, Marion and Janice. Hello, everyone. This is Marianne with the Sustainable Living Podcast. And today we're going to do some very, very different. So, what's different, you asked? Well, you're just going to hear from me. Nobody else. It's just me. Sorry. So, this is the very, very first solo episode we are ever going to do or ever have done. <laughs> Whatever is the right way to say this. The other thing which is different is that we didn't have an episode last week. If you're one of our so super valued subscribers and no matter what we put out, you download it into your app and hopefully listen to it. (laughs) You might have seen an episode called No Episode This Week. What happened is that Janice and I went to Podcast Movement. It's one of the biggest But it is the biggest podcasting conference in the world. So a conference for podcasters. And we were all excited and brought our microphones and we were going to do an episode for you. And it just didn't happen. There was so much going on. Yeah, so much going on in so many different ways. The uh, conference was fantastic. If you want to hear more about it, let me know and i tell you more. Uh, But the other thing going on, I'm going to talk about right now. If I say it never happened before, I said we didn't uh, publish an episode, I am lying. When we first started out, very first start out, I had no idea about tech, about anything. I didn't know what an ecom is. I didn't have a microphone. I just had downloaded Skype and tried that out. I came from this totally non-tech, don't want to touch it background. I did a little bit. I mean, I did social media type of stuff. That's how I actually met Janice, as most of you know already. Janice was the one who got our podcast started. What happened is that Janice's dad became very sick and she kind of disappeared from the earth for a little while because she was so busy taking care of her dad and taking care of her mother, who is in her 80s. The sad story is that her dad was diagnosed with cancer and he passed away. And actually, one of the first episodes after we came back on air was about her experience with hospice and so forth. This is way, way back. And of course, you're welcome to check it out. And hopefully, (laughs) one of the things you will notice too is that our quality of podcasting has up leveled has become a lot better. I didn't know how to put said podcast on the air. I didn't know how to do any of that. Things have changed. Now I do. I have learned a lot. I have gone to lots of tutorials, listened to lots of podcasts on podcasting, and have just recently joined the E-League with Elsie Escobar. So if any of you out there are women podcasters who want to up-level their game, I so, so, so recommend Elsie and her E-League, which was our podcasting intensive. So good. But again, this is not what I wanted to tell you about. I wanted to talk about personal sustainability today. Really, that is the reason that you're just hearing from me. And this is not one of the usual Chinese and I shows. Because sometimes even something you love to do can become too much. And right now, Janice doesn't have the space to include podcasting into her life. It's not that she doesn't want to. It's not that she doesn't love the medium. But many things are happening And one of them is that her mother is living with her right now and she has to make arrangements 
for her to move into a place where she can be cared for and, and many things like that. And if any of you ever have been caretakers, you know that that is something which takes your whole being. It is very, very hard to commit to anything else. It might not seem like it's a lot when you're looking in from the outside, but if you are in that situation, if you have ever been, you understand that it's a physical and emotional marathon in many ways. That's the word I want to use. It is a marathon. So right now, Janice is taking a little break. And I'm happy to take over for a little while to do, you know, the things, the work which comes along with podcasting. And there is quite a bit of that because I want her to keep feeling that joy and not feeling this is another thing I have to do. This is another thing I really don't have time and energy for. Because I think many of you might have gone through some like that, where suddenly this thing, which brought you so much pleasure and so much joy, has become a drag, has become some, you almost physically have a reaction about. And guess what? That kind of happened to me last year. You might remember or not know that we had taken a family trip to Germany. My body had been freaking out on me. I had hurt my knee. I could not bend it. For some reason, that caused, I don't know if it was the same or something else, but I was just hurting everywhere. I felt like I had arthritis or something. And we went to a family reunion and my whole idea had been, oh, I will go and I will go hiking every day with my friends and everything is wonderful. Well, I couldn't go hiking because my knee was hurting, my feet were hurting, everything was hurting. And then my friend I wanted to go hiking with was diagnosed with cancer and she just had gone through a major operation and was in treatment. And my other friend I was counting to go hiking with and have a good time had just lost uh, her partner. And everybody was just very, very sad. So when I came back, instead of having been refreshed for my vacations, I felt drained. And at that point, I said to Janice, you know, I just can't do it. And she stepped up, no problem. So for almost two months, she was doing all the work. And it's joyful work, don't get me wrong, but it is work to come along with a podcast. Why I'm sharing this with you? Well, for one, I feel you all are my tribe or our tribe. It's a family of people we might never have seen face to face, but... I am talking to you almost every week and you're on my mind. So many of you I have met via social media and so forth and some even in person. Some of you have come onto the podcast and have become friends because we talked and we shared. I wanted you to know what's going on. But also, I thought this could be a lesson for all of us. This is something which can happen to anyone. And so my question to you right now is, how are you doing? Do you feel overwhelmed? Are you in a space where everything is going really easy right now and life is just flowing and everything is great? So what I wanted to invite you to do is to just sit for a minute and just close your eyes and go within yourself, go into that silence and ask yourself, become really aware how am I doing? What are you discovering? Do you feel overwhelmed and frazzled and there's just too much going on? You just don't see your way out. You feel like everything is so important and I have to do everything. If that is you... Right now, I want to give you permission to just let go. Say, well, maybe right now I can figure out what it is I can let go. But no, there is something you can do without for right now and give yourself a little break. I think we 
all, all, all need to give ourselves permission to not push so hard all the time, but to relax more, to sit back more. I know there is this huge movement wherever you go and you see entrepreneurial advice and, and push and go harder and go more. And I think that's fine for a certain part of your life and maybe for a week or a month. But if life is conducted that way to always push and do more, it leads to complete burnout. And I'm the expert at that. I have done so <laughs> more than once. So I really, really, really don't want you to do that. I, right now, I'm in a space again, too, where I feel like I have taken on a lot. What can I do to maintain the joy in the things I'm doing and that they are not becoming obligations or drags or something I just want to throw in the corner and never look at again? One of the things I, I'm doing and I did, I'm working on it currently, is to identify the different parts of my life. And I think you all have said our life is kind of almost like a lot of separate different things going on. For some of you, it might be a job you're doing outside of your home, then your relationship with your partner or with your children, maybe a sports team you're involved in. They are kind of completely different environments, different things, and then all of them together make up your life. I hope that makes sense. For me, I have this podcast that's like one page. Then I'm involved in the Bancroft Center for Sustainability. I'm a director. We gave ourselves those titles. So there's three of us which are directors. And we're working on not only starting another, another podcast about said, but also doing a lot of physical work. We are building up a garden. We are organizing classes, you know, reaching out, finding other teachers who want to come in, doing all the outreach it takes to get some off the ground. So that's another portion, another part of my life. Then I have children which live in in close proximity to me. And two of those children have children again. For those of you which have followed us for a while, you know that I'm a very active grandma. Part of that is that when I had little children, I was very isolated and alone. And it was very difficult. And I don't want that experience to be the experience for my children. I will go out of my way to be available to give them a break as parents and to also be with my grandchildren and have a relationship with them. Oh, and I have a husband. <laughs> and he is very, very patient, but he wants some time too. And I want to spend time with him as well. So that's family. That's my family page or my family identity. Then I have an urban homestead. I have a sort of an acre. We have a small house, 800 square feet. The rest of said sort of an acre is turned into mostly growing space and then also some storage space. And storage can be a problem in itself because then you end up getting more stuff. If you have a place to put it, somehow those spaces get filled. So one of the things I'm doing is perching and getting rid of things. But... There are plants which need to be taken care of. I have at least 120 fruit trees. I have at this point about 20 chickens. I have two little dogs which need stuff. And we live in a semi-desert. So the main thing is keeping those plants alive is to water. Then I have a desire to write. I like to get more into our blog post, into possibly writing a book. There is this other, this writerly self. And for those of you who don't know, I met my husband in a short story writing class. So this always has been kind of a theme to be back with the writing self. So then there is a little thing called money. Right now, a lot of my activities are not paid very well. And I need to change that. So that's figuring out how to do that. And then last, 
And it's least. It's my least favorite thing in the world. <laughs> there is a house to be kept up. There's housework. There's cleaning. There's laundry. There's cooking. There's, you know, that stuff. I think you all can relate to that one. So I identified those different parts of my life. And I made a list for all of them, kind of listing the tasks which are going in there. And also the tasks I'm doing the task I'm perceiving I should be doing and should is such a terrible word, but kind of get a complete list. What does this area of my life take to be really functioning to its fullest? Now, if you have followed me, you know that I tend to stuff tons of things into my day, said I have this idea I'm superwoman and said my day is 48 hours and not 24 hours and I don't need any sleep. So right now I'm really letting go of that, making those lists and becoming realistic about what can I do and identify things on the list, which might be a great thing to do, but they are not really important right now. And so things I can let go. So for one thing, those lists are helping me to figure out what are the time sucks? What, what are the things which are taking a lot of time and are not getting a lot of results? So for example, I'm, I'm impulsive in ways. I'm a jumper, which is great because it exposes me to many, many things. But it can also be not so great because I might get myself involved over my head into something which turns out not to be the right fit for me. That said, for the most part, it works well because I feel I have a huge range of experiences because I have jumped into it and then figured out maybe after a while, oh, this one is really not what I'm interested in. And then it's okay to let go of it. But importantly here is identify the time sucks and identify the things which bring you lots and lots of joy. Hopefully you will find that the things which take lots of time can be replaced with something which do not take quite as much time. And you can increase time allotted to the things which are pure joy. Sometimes you might find that things which bring you a lot of joy just have to wait a little bit. For me, a case in point was my garden. As much as I love the garden, I decided I couldn't plant anything new until I have a watering system installed. Now, watering by hand is a time suck. It takes so much time every week. But if I take a day or two or three and really figure out how to lay down the water system, it will free so many hours to do things like podcasting or other things I really, really enjoy doing. Or maybe do nothing. <laughs> Who would have thought? Another case in point for me is yoga. I used to teach 12 hours of yoga a week, and now I'm teaching not at all. So even I am busy and I feel lots of things going on, teaching yoga again is high on the priority list of things I want to do. Those are going to be good for me personally and also good for that income part I was talking about. <laughs> so I hope... You see what I'm getting it. Basically, my message to you today is to enjoy your day, to let go of must. I must do this. I'm driven by duty and step into the joy of I want to do this. And just saying that doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. And I find myself forgetting or getting overwhelmed and then having to remind myself, hopefully the steps I shared with you today can be of a little bit of help. This was, as I said, <laughs> it's the very first solo episode. And I would love to hear from you what you think. Let us, let me know if you think that's an enjoyable thing. If it was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm much more interested in interviews. I love to hear from you. So send me an email at sustainablelivingpodcast at gmail.com. And as you know, we have a blog, so you can visit the blog and just leave a comment. 
and of course we are on social media everywhere. I think we interact the most on Instagram and Facebook, but I do check Twitter and what's what else is there? What else is there? Uh, I think Pinterest is not a place where you interact a lot, but we are there. You can check us out. You can follow us. I am wishing you the most beautiful day, the most beautiful week. And thank you so much for being part of my community and for indulging me by listening to, uh, you know, what I really felt I wanted to share with you today. Please do let us know how you feel. And if you went ahead and did a list, I would love to hear from you what you found out about your day, about your uh, shoulds and musts and I love tos. Are they in balance? How did you feel? I so would love to hear about that. All right. Take care. Talk to you next week. <laughs>